Fraser Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with my very good friends, Jose Neuer and Ryan Boniface. How are we doing, guys? Good, thank you. Fabulous, thank you. Thank Glad you so to much. hear it, and we are on and ready to go at the last minute. Slightly late for our live, but if you want to join our I'm slightly sorry, champ. I can't hear you. Oh no, it's all gone wrong. Oh, sorry, I can guys. hear you. Oh, I can hear you, Lee. Oh, it's at home. It's at home. Don't worry. We're still hey, good. Hey, Evie. <laughs> I'm just saying to Evie, we're getting liked a lot Sorry. on TikTok by Evie. Just saying hi. That's Thank my bad. You. Apologies. No worries. We're good. These technical right. snafus and real life things are part of what make it all up. So are we both yeah. good, guys? Are we both good? Yeah. I'm slightly chaotic. Oh, yeah. I've just ran in the door oh, yeah. from work and two minutes later we're on. So it's all over the place. But we will power through because that's what we do. Thank you everyone out there listening, watching, downloading, whatever you're doing. We are on all podcast players. We are on YouTube. Not only can you see all our videos, you can join us live each and every week. Inspiration Nation, Jose Noya, just search us out. Join there, YouTube and TikTok, in fact, as well. So all good stuff. I believe I am up for conversation this week. Is that right? Yes. Joe smugly nodding his head there as if this is some sort of victory, but I'm not sure why. (laughs) <laughs> whatever makes you feel good Jay whatever so many makes you feel good so many assumptions <laughs> this week guys for conversation and I've, I've referenced this a little bit on some previous shows um, but what I want to talk about on my subject is called backlog your life and this is a what you would call in neuro linguistic terms a framing device um, for those not familiar with that framing device is kind of it's almost it's like metaphors it's how you how you picture things in your head or how you make sense of them one of joe's favorites maslow hierarchy of needs is a framing device which is just a a way of representing kind of like your brain's primal instinct about it's almost survival mode of how you kind of take care of the the basic things before you take care of the more complex ones and maslow put that into like a a pictogram and that's what you call a framing device because it's a way of explaining that and and spelling it out to people or making it clear um, in fact, the survival instinct is another way of framing that same thing. And there's there's loads of different ways to frame versions of the same thing. And one of the things I always say to people, it's, it's down to you to kind of find what fits with you, what matches your personality and what behaviours, what resonates with you, and how can you then use that to help understand things and more importantly, implement things and utilise them. Backlog is a framing device. It comes from, it's, it's an IT kind of term that's now spilled out into business and project management all that stuff overall and a backlog is effectively a to-do list nothing more nothing less but like everything it's the nuances and how you look at it and how you you then manage that so if you were working in like an IT team or something developing software you'd list out all the things you need to do to make or improve whatever it is you're you're doing so if you've well this that we're on now zoom zoom whoever makes zoom the zoom corporation would have a list of all their things to improve and as you start to see new functioning come in improvements performance get better etc etc that's them working through their backlog and implementing these things now what you do when you've got a backlog is you then prioritize things you know you size how long it will take you assess the value you use that to kind of then put it in an order of what you want to do first and you move things from your backlog to your action plan and you work on them and you constant and then you you finish your your actions and you come back to your backlog and you take new stuff off and you constantly refine and add to etc etc and i like that as a way of working it's not for everyone there's lots of other ways to do lists but i find it useful and what i decided to do at the start of this year and this is what i have referenced a little bit in conversation on a few podcasts um but i know it's definitely working for me now so i want to talk about it i've started to put my life on that and not my life as a whole but my to-do stuff so last year i kind of hit on the this concept of little and often because i'm a nightmare to myself that if i've got a job to do and i think it will take me four hours i'm i'd always be like oh i just there's not enough time i need to wait till i've got four hours to do that i've only got a couple of hours there i probably can't do it and i'd put stuff off unless i could do all of it or certainly a sizable amount to feel like i've made big progress so you know you'd wait until a saturday or sunday and then that eats up most of your day or you don't have time to do it or or whatever else whereas i could take that four hour job and divide it into chunks and decide i'm going to spend an hour a day on that now in reality there's a little bit of whatever you're doing whatever it is you know it could be a diy thing it could be writing a book it could be I've decided to start painting or learning musical instrument, whatever it is, it's a thing. 
and there will be set up time and there'll be put away time. And that put me off even more because I'd be like, well, it's not even an hour because I've got to take five minutes to set up, five minutes to put away. I've probably only got 45 minutes on it. That's even less. But stepping back from that, if I've got a job that takes four hours and I could dedicate 45 minutes a day to it with that tidying stuff up and putting stuff away, over the course of five days, I could get that job done. I don't need to wait until a four hour gap. I just do little and often. Pottering progress, I actually heard that referred to today by someone in, in how they do it. Like you're pottering around doing bits and you're getting stuff done, but you're making progress. And I, I had to, and I know that's probably really simple to a lot of people and it's quite obvious, but I really had to force my thinking to accept that those little bits of progress and things were as good as making those big, big changes. And I started to do that last year. We talked about it on and off and I got lots of stuff done. We managed to, in the house, decorate three rooms by me using that sort of, that sort of mentality. But I'd also drift a little bit where I would get, I'd be making use of that time, but I'd kind of fall into comfort activities a bit back to i think we were talking the other week during a prioritization about stuff that you do because you like it or it feels easy and I, I fell into some of those jobs sometimes where i'd cycle around on them and not i'd keep something going but i wouldn't really make any progress and I, would, I was consciously aware of that so i think i'd made a step forward but i'd fallen into a routine if you like of it again and it it became its own form of procrastination in a way so before i talk about what i started this year pause thoughts from you guys on the view the concepts say Durley, of course you can make progress doing things in little bits what's your initial views yeah. ryan do you want to go first not sure i work in terms of a, a backlog in that framing device way but i definitely have a lengthy to-do list that i pick and choose what's the most important kind of similar to last week maybe because i guess that was a framing device as well with that urgent important uh important not urgent type stuff that we spoke about last week i probably use things like that probably frame probably frame my to-do list into those four windows and then just tick off from wherever eventually things will move from one box to the other either they'll solve themselves and therefore won't need my intervention anymore or they will escalate through those boxes and require more intervention or it will suddenly become uh, important urgent rather than it just being important not urgent so you i kind of try and take my day on its own merit if you imagine, I like to imagine it like I'm, I love. The, I do these analogies all the time on the podcast. But say, say you're a PC repairer. You repair PCs for people. You just. I feel like I walk into work some days and there's a plethora, loads of them. And I just, I just sometimes I just have to get started on one thing and then they domino. There's that as well. I I have that. That uh, that's probably a different thing altogether. But no, no, I, I think that could... fits completely. That bit about it's breaking things down, whatever way you frame it. But that big job becomes smaller, and sometimes it is just getting on with the little bit. And if you concentrate on each little bit, yeah. like you said, it's a domino. The big thing then takes care of itself. Like I have, I have some things where I'm, I, I don't know. I have like ten emails to reply to, but I also have another semi-important task I have to do. As soon as I've got through five of those emails, I'm like, great. I'll get through the other five. And it took me half the time I anticipated it would. I procrastinated it as much as I wanted to. I wouldn't have even started it now. And then you just feel a bit more rewarded, I think, at the end of it as well, because you've dug your dug yourself through that the issues in that to-do list and you've kind of freed up some time. So yeah, that's how I don't, I probably don't get to pick and choose that much because I don't, because mine is more professional than what Lee's is more his personal life. So he can pick and choose what's more important to him. It's still nice to have a to-do list that you have some element of control over. Jose, what do you think? Yeah, I would, I would love this because it almost like builds on the theme of last week. I think it sort of adds into that because you said about another type of prioritization thing. Yeah, yeah, like the backlog. You're ch picking and choosing the things that are important, and then almost using those four quadrants. Oh, quadrant again! <laughs> you love a quadrant, don't you, Joe? Love Hashtag a quadrant. quadrant. Yeah, you want to pick up it, on the inside uh, joke? Go back one episode in the archive, episode two hundred four inspirationnation.org.uk yeah and Leo is actually going we need to do it's quadrants because we do the most episode with the word quadrant in it I like this a lot because actually one of the one of the videos that we did I, I framed I framed the video as in how to attack your big goals and someone said well it doesn't talk about how you frame your big goals so then I put on there you've got to just do the small stuff like start off with the smallest action possible and this is what I like about this is because you know, those small snippets add up to those big wins. And this is the thing that I love to do. And if I think back and how, as an example for me on this, and thank you so much for Evie for asking what the live is on. It's actually about backlog, backlog your life and prioritization. When I look back at 
how this podcast was built and how we got to this stage it just started with a one minute video every day and it's like the the dominoes start to fall right and the big thing of this is that we're now doing lives on youtube we've now got 200 and this is the 205th episode isn't it it is 205th episode and this all came from the smallest of actions that you would just prioritize you go right we're just going to do that we're just going to i'm just going to do a one minute video each day and that compounded into this and then lee said i'm just going to find out how to do a podcast and it turned into i don't know how long you researched to do the podcast lee but you you probably broke that down i don't know into some smaller chunks to sort of just spend an hour doing that and see what happened and then it started to happen right because the big thing was actually getting us on a podcast right indeed and you prioritized it and i think you've been doing this maybe you've just been more conscious about how you do it now yeah i'm still i'm very aware i had the thing and again there's different parts of life and, and i use this kind of these type of techniques in in work that's where i've taken it from but that's not really what i'm talking about this is how i've then used it wider than that mm. that whole bit i talked about and what i did last year i say i'd, I'd consciously thought about this con carving out time and little and often there wasn't a great point a bit like like ryan said there's i had a load of things in my head to do but i didn't it was a bit haphazard if you like so i all mm. i was always doing stuff so i kind of for this year i've wanted to try and again you know we might get six months through the year and i've been this off and it's not what i do and it doesn't always work for everyone but i'm doing it now and it's working for me so i thought i'd you know share it as a bit of inspiration is to take that to the ne le next level i'd plan it out a little bit and keep track so it ties in a bit like a journal and thing like you say joe so quite simply i sat down on and i've got it on my list here on the set monday the second of january and I made two lists. In fact, I made one list first, which was in my head, what's everything I can think of that I want to do? And then of that, I then put a job in each work weekday for me. And all I need to do as in even the morning or the evening is carve out half an hour, an hour, whatever it is. It varies by day, depending on what's going on. But for me, and to set the wider context of those listening, so I work full time, I would say office job home office job but full-time monday to friday ryan can attest that it's a very part fast paced environment in which you work and there isn't a lot of time to breathe in fact much like i'm doing with you guys i'll probably spend five to six hours a day on various zoom meetings and whatever else and then catching up on paperwork and stuff in between i love it all it's all good the fast paced thing is what i like but then this isn't like oh i just pot around all day and get a few things done i'm working full-time and then division labor in the household i could have working out on my partner i pick up a lot of the, the housework and stuff around it so this is to show that you can carve out time when you've got a lot on so again only half an hour an hour monday to friday and the reason for that is i keep the weekends free because that's where i get some downtime i'm not i'm not advocating the whole wake up at five do nothing but be productive until 10 and fall asleep and if you dare watch netflix you're wasting your life i don't think you spend all your time watching netflix on your friends spectrum but there is downtime there is playing games there is watching tv and i leave the weekends completely free again we might be we're going to get shopping or we're visiting family or we might just want to chill out or there's lots of other stuff to do that isn't on the list or actually i'm going to use i've got two hours free on sunday i'm going to pick a couple of things off of the list into next week and work ahead and have that flexibility but that's that's what works for me it might be that you work night shifts and you carve out a little bit during the day it might be you work weekends and you've got weekdays free you, you know there's no set pattern for this it's what works for you and that's how i've decided to divide it up but give myself that bit of flexibility but for jen and so i I then put them out to the days, kind of made myself a little list of the activities this would do by doing the little and often. And one of, I'll tell you now, one of the things on my list is progress the book. So I'm currently writing an Inspiration Nation book. It will be out this year. People who are interested, keep an eye on what we're doing and it'll come out. But it's three or four of those days where an hour is spent doing that with the goal of progressing the book. So they all ball up and there's lots of other things where it, it, it balls up into something. So during January, working full time, housework and stuff and other stuff on top time to chill and relax as well we're currently re-watching all the marvel movies at the moment which is fantastic where are you I, up to we are halfway through thor 2 at the moment oh you're making good progress then yeah the second half will be do you remember, this when, do you remember when you were doing it to me yes when I was, yes when I, was I do to get <laughs> absolutely i do we repainted our bathroom and it wasn't just slapping some paint on the wall repainted it and it's 
walls and wooden cladding that need to be repaired and taken care of. I think we talked to you, Joe, change the light fixture, change the curtain for a screen. We did a, did a big job on the bathroom to try and oversell it. Made sure planning for a wedding, which is happening this year, is on track. I have a wall here in front of me. You guys have seen it where I've put up my nerdy collection of stuff on the wall, which needed sorting out, framing, putting up. I love um, that, by the way. Progressed the book and I wanted to, the gate had broken in the garden. I wanted to fix that. So that was my January which I, you know, for me, I feel like if I can do all of that in that month, I've done pretty good. And for the days, how many days is there in, on my list for January? And I say the first day of the plan is planned Jan January and the last day of the plan is planned February. So then I can roll into February. And the last day of this month, for example, is then planned March. So some of these things are little, really small things mm, when they make progress. Nice. Every Friday on my plan is upload all the podcast stuff, so that's all done. So I'm building this bits in, as well as all the other activities. So 21 days, and I fell short of three days. So three days I didn't do what I planned, but for the other 18 days I did do what I planned. And other than fixing the gate, which is now done, it rolled over into February, I got everything done. So for me that really worked. That's, and I don't think I would have done all. And for example, with the bathroom, that then we took out a weekend to do it on top of what was here. But a lot of the prep work, so researching what I needed to do, buying the right tools, getting everything in, I got all that done during some of those hours, half hours in the week. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got it done in a weekend, for an example. So it, it worked well for me. It's a bit of an experiment. But then I've say I've then started to build up a list. So if I what I do is I walk around and I think, oh, no, that needs doing. And then I might forget about it. And then two days later, I'd be like, oh, no, that needs doing. And it's, you know, there was a lot of, and it, I found it a bit stressful because in my head, I'd be in the middle of something. I think, oh, no, I've got to remember, I've got to do that as well. Now, any time I think, oh, I've got to do that, it goes on my list. That's it. It's done. It's on mm -hmm. the list. I don't need to think about it anymore because when I get to my day where I review the list, it's there and I can decide, am I going to do that in the next four weeks or is that going to push on? So there's a big de-stressing thing for me that, you know, Ryan, you like to talk about compartmentalising at all a lot. That works for me because now whenever I see these things, it's on the list. I don't have to worry. It's going to take yeah. care of itself I have because a plan it's for on it. my list. Yeah. Um, and I've got to say, I rolled into, I've got a plan for February some big jobs, some sort of the big one, and I've got them on the floor behind me. I've got a whole set of skirting boards for the downstairs, which in a little loft and away are all going to get put up in little chunks. One one morning this week, I set up a little workstation area outside so I can cut them all up, did the measurements, got them all unpacked, little fiddly bits, but that's an hour saved when I'd spend a bit more time doing it. So I'm kind of, and again, for me, beforehand, it would have been like, well, I'm not even going to get it started. What's the point? Whereas now... I've made some progress. I've got a start, and it'll it'll roll into getting done in bits during the month. We're yeah, halfway I'm... through the month. Sorry, Joe, did beat to no, no. on. Yeah, we are for those. Obviously, with people alive, we're on the fifteenth of the month. It will be the seventeenth when this all gets uploaded. But fifteenth right now, and I've missed one day so far. But the reason I missed the day is we had a problem with our pets, and we had to take them to the vet. So that obviously is okay. Slotted mm. in because that is as happens with this urgence but i got to i moved stuff around and picked up a couple of extra things at the weekend where i've got that flex i built in and i'm, I'm largely on track and actually i might not get everything done but if i get four or five or seven of eight or whatever it is or three or five that's still making that progress which i think joe comes back to that concept you've said about you know if you fall off the horse get back on again so all, time, yeah. all of these different devices are in my head as kind of metaphors and reinforcement and things which is just helping me be more productive as we like to say and for me like i said i haven't got that constant list because i have got the list but it's not floating in my head thinking i'm just going to keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it and i can look back yeah look back and be like i did that i did that i did that i did that and for me personally with what makes me tick and we've talked enough for you guys to know what that is it works really, really well for me. And it's an evolution. It's building on last year. It's bringing in different techniques. I like to say I'm a, a buffet learner in my style of how I do things. And I've pulled in lots of different elements and I'm making it work for me. Yeah, I really that like is, all that. Because, that is yeah, backlog your life. No, no, it's really good because I like the thing. There's a couple of elements that I've spotted that are the things we talked about, like getting back on the horse, actually making it easy for yourself to do them, like, your list and then you know preparing the stuff like you've got the stuff in it's there it's measured that's a lot of atomic habit stuff around you know like when i went running i'd lay my hat lay my clothes out to go running right all those sorts of things it is making it easy and for you like you say is 
you can look back and say, this is what I've achieved, and that gives you motivation to achieve. But what I do really like about this is that you, even though when you get things that come in and knock you off track, you say, well, I accept that I didn't do these things for those three days, but actually, it's not, I'm not going to stop doing it. Actually, 18 of those days, I was actually succeeding in what I was doing. So it's actually a really good way of, you know, James Clear says about you're voting for the person you want to become, this person who gets things done, this person who, you know, is now out, it's stuff out of their head is on a list. You're now, I get this stuff done. Look, I've done this stuff. And it's like building that identity to say you get things done. Even if you get knocked off, tra- 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 knocked off track, you've still got a plan for you to get back on track. And it's not the end of the world, right? That's what I loved about this. But I absolutely love it because I think I can see a lot of adjusted, whether it's important, what's not important, adjusting in, in, a, in an important way. And actually, there was a, a, another thing you mentioned where I did three things this day and I had five days, but I'm just moving on to the next day or the next month. And you're not knocked off the list. It's just I've moved it. So then I'm going to get to it, but it's just not going to be right now. It's going to be, whereas we would probably, we didn't write it down. It'd probably be exactly like I would do. I'd just forget about it and they go, oh no. And then I'll get stressed because I'll see it. Like you said, you go, oh, I see that. So I really like this. I think I might have to start. Where, are you recording this on a computer? Are you doing it on a spreadsheet? Yes, I've got a little, just, and it's very simple, just in an Excel list and I have a tab for January. And all I did was just write them down with a little summary of what I want to do. And a second tab with the backlog, which is just a list. And I'll just create a new tab for each month, which... so. Offline, can I I'm happy something? to share with you, of course. Yeah, Jose. can you share it with me? Indeed. Would there be a template we could share of this? I said, yes, I'm sure there could be. We can put that like up. Like a template? 100% I can make that, not a problem. Just an example template. I think this would be really useful for people. I mean, I want to try it because it might work for me. And I want to be able to write down the things because actually it's cool. Because what I do with editing the podcast, I tend to just go, oh, this is important, but I end it like, like now. I'll go tonight. But I haven't written it down anywhere. I've not like, put it in a, oh, this is for January. I've just said every day, this is what I'm doing, right? I'm editing on a Tuesday. After this, I'll be you know, editing. But it's not like a, like you said, like you're putting it into the month and going, oh, there's actually a physical record of this is what I've done, what I've fallen off. I think I really like this. And actually, I could practice this. This could work for me. I'm not saying it will work, but I want to try it to see if it does work. And if it does work, what I do like also is that you've built in planning time. And this is what I've learned yeah. with this leadership. You plan, what is it, the beginning of the month and the end of the month? Yeah. Is there a planning date? Yeah, I love that. That's it. And again, I've, I've taken various courses I've done this this year talk about this in and again back to this IT kind of way of working it's it, project plan and everything calls under a thing called scrum if people want to look it up and look into it which lots of people know but that is what you do is you work in a, a cycle and it can be two weeks or four weeks right whatever it is but everything happens in that window including planning and playback and debriefing and everything so you it's it's a way to make sure you make time for everything because that time to plan for, for me and I know for lots of people and things I've read online and seen like that that's where it, it falls down because I've just got to get on I've just got to get on but you you discipline yourself to make time for that and and it's actually quite good you know having a day where you haven't just got to hit all the actions and all I've got to do today is look at my plan and get that structured and that's me good well done I've done a good day and I've built that yeah. in so first day of the month last day of the month and little bits like there's a, a couple of mornings that I will get the shopping done at like seven o'clock in the morning and I've built them into the plan and like I said a day for making sure the podcast staff happens so probably 25% of my plan is already preset but they're in and I don't try and overload it by squeezing other things in and then both don't happen and but I've still got 75% of my month where I can slot in all these other activities and it just again there'll be loads of different ways for different people to work this in different ways but we can put together a bit of a template and some guidance notes well, share this with people see I, if it helps the reason is I've built that plan bit because when I was, do, I was doing the, the leadership sort of stuff that I was doing is that you there was there, there was something called a um a framework and you, it'd be exactly what you said there'd be a, there'd be like you'd have 15 you know, every leader had to put 15 minutes in one to plan their day and then there'd be a plan for the month and so that planning time really does make a big difference and this is what i do at the beginning of each day i do have a little plan that i have for the day but i like the fact this is a lot bit more long term that it's actually monthly rather than just weekly it's actually yeah. quite long term i like that good stuff i really do like this ah, good i'm glad this has been my, my little experiment with myself and it's it's working out uh, again i'm only midway through february so this might be a forgotten memory by august but it's worked out well, well no no because so we want the template we want the template we want to try it out so, <laughs> i will definitely i think get the that nation would appreciate we'll the template that, as well. and we'll we'll put it on the website we'll share it through socials probably put it in the comments on this video etc etc are you going to call it something you're going to call this template something you're going to own it yes we'll think of a creative slightly punned name for it i like it 
I like it. I'm going to try it. We've got a few, I don't know if you saw someone in the chat on TikTok asking where our live is. So we are always live on TikTok. Also YouTube, just search Inspiration Nation Jose Neuer. Subscribe on YouTube. You will get notified when we go live each and every week around about six o'clock if I'm not running late. Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, depends what we've got going on. But yeah. you will hit subscribe. That is the way to find out. Not only does that help keep you informed, but it helps us. The more people that subscribe, the more people that like, the more people that comment, the more it helps with all the algorithms that none of us understand, but it gets gets us in the right place in front of the right people. And don't forget to sign up to the email newsletter. Don't forget to sign up for that as well, because that's so important. We want to have your email so we can write to you. Indeed. And send maybe a copy of this template. Click on Joe's link tree in his socials or go to inspirationnation.org.uk. Right at the top, there is a banner. Blog is on there. If you click that, you can sign up to receive the newsletter straight through to your inbox. Probably do a little merch plug as well now, shouldn't we? Inspirationnation.org.uk, oh, yeah. as I mentioned it. I am wearing my hoodie. Have we got any mugs around, guys? We can flash I haven't the got camera. my mug today. But I've got my T-shirt. I've got the mine mugs here. Downstairs. I'll just put my yeah. hand on the top so you see that I don't store old train tickets in it and I do use it as a mug. They are all available. Inspirationnation.org.uk. Right, thank you for that, guys. I'm glad that went well. I, um, I've been wanting to talk about this one for a little while since I started doing it, but I wanted to let it kind of mature a little bit so I knew I had something to talk about. So... Thank you for indulging me. Thank you, everybody on TikTok. Join us live. Jose Noya, inspirate J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. Yeah, that's, that's on TikTok, it yeah. on TikTok and Jose Noya Inspiration Nation on YouTube. We have had a number of people drop in on both live platforms, so we appreciate that. And of course, subscribe on YouTube. Hold back catalog there, and we are on every podcast platform known to man. Hit subscribe, five star reviews, leave some comments, hit like, all of that good stuff, and tell friends and family. That is what helps us grow. Bloody love it. I think all that's left for me to do is now count us down. Yeah. Three to one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys Catch later. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.